ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to invite all of you to our tonight's program. Our tonight's program, the topic is the formation of a new Nigeria Bar Association, new NBA faction by a group of lawyers. Our guests, our guests tonight are Jibril Samuel Okuteba of DS Okuteba SAN and Company, legal practitioners, notaries, public, and consultants. He's a learned seal. Our next guest is Mazi Afamu Sigwe, former general secretary of Nigeria Bar Association, and Daniel Buala, special advisor on legal and constitutional matters to the deputy president of the Senate and head of the legal unit of the deputy Senate president's office. They are here to discuss this new development among Nigerian lawyers and tell us what they think about it. I will uh, stream live the, yes. If you look here on that date, 28th August, 2020, a letter was addressed to the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, notifying him of the formation of a new Nigeria Bar Association. What does this development portend for the legal practice in Nigeria and for the Nigeria Bar Association in general? So this evening, we are going to hear our guests speak on the subject. First of all, we are calling on, we are calling on Mr. Jibril, Samuel Okutepa S.A.N. to tell us, first of all, what do you think sir, of, the, of this development among Nigerian lawyers? I will ask you to unmute yourself, yes. Can you please unmute yourself and tell us what you think? Um, I hope everybody is hearing me. Yes, sir. All right, first of all, let me thank you for the invitation extended to me. Um, and I also want to thank you because this is the first time I am uh, uh, seeing you face to face. I, I do not know who was behind the Lomba television, but I now know that um, the man called Daniel is behind it. And the Daniel that I know are those who understand by the reading of books. So having said that, and without signing to Ecclesiastica, uh, I, I want to ap appreciate you and my colleagues, particularly the man that I usually refer to as my boss, even though he refuses to accept it, Maxi Afam Osigwe, past general secretary of the bar, and my younger brother, Daniel Buala, a man that I, 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 I refer to as a encyclopedia of Nigerian politics, Nigerian bar, and the current affairs. He's a solicitor of England and will, an advocate in that court, he was admitted there. So I thank you and all my colleagues that are on this program uh, tonight. Now, uh, let me say that the attempt by our colleagues to uh, form what they call new Nigerian bar needs to be situated within the context of what has been the experiences of Nigerian lawyers under the monolithic uh, uh, association called Nigerian Bar Association. And a lot of us are, are, are aware that prior to 1998, when the Nigerian Bar Association was resuscitated, there was crisis in the Nigerian Bar Association that led to the bar became uh, comatose as a result of um, crisis in that body. And so when the resuscitation was done and led by no less a person than Chief Solomon Adeboyega Awomolo and all other Nigerian lawyers, chairmen and secretaries, we all know the historical facts that our revered chief uh, TJ Okoko became president of Nigerian Bar Association. We're running what we're calling delegate system until my president, President um, Alege, 
became president of the bar, and they were clamor for the Nigerian Bar Association to embrace what they call universal suffrage. And since the introduction of that universal suffrage in 2016, that gave birth to President A.B. Mahmoud, that introduction has not been without controversies. Uh, first, we noticed that J.K. Gazama, Esquire SAL, complained and went to court and had the privilege of uh, defending the company that provided the legal services, I mean, they provided the internet services to the Nigerian Bar Association. Now, J.K. Gazama made a complaint about what he called uh, internet fraud, and it appears that his complaint, even though he went to court to ventilate it, he did not get what he perceived to be the desired justice. Then came 2018, that produced now Paul Osoro. And in that election, Atobi Okafo, that I had the privilege also to be uh, his uh, campaign coordinator, also went to court. He complained about electoral fraud, and we went to court, and at the end of the day, we got, we got judgments with the void of justice. Again, in 2020, Paul Lusoro led um, MBA, ESCO, conducted the election that produced now my president, Olumide Akwata. And then again, that uh, election was also surrounded in so much controversy that even the now president of the bar had had to complain about the series of violations of our constitution leading to the conduct of the election and what have you. Now, I think the attempt by some of our colleagues, and let me, first of all, before I go to that attempt, correct some impression that uh, this attempt is limited to lawyers of Northern extraction. I have the privilege to come from the part of the North called the Middle Belt. And I know that I've, I've been consulted. The lawyers who are behind it have called me. And my findings are that although those lawyers are practicing within the enclave called North, but they are not lawyers of Northern extractions, at least one of them. So um, the mistake we may be making is to look at this attempt by our colleagues as a northernization or a regionalization or ethnicization or an Elrufai kind of a fight. I think it's much more deeper than that. And I think that uh, the leadership of the Nigerian Bar Association will do themselves good and do ourselves good if we don't treat these people who are making this uh, calls or attempting this call as refracts in the legal profession. I know that uh, my firm may, may accuse me of not being uh, in sympathy with him when he was disqualified. And I think that there is a, a, there is a need for the legal profession the Association of Lawyers, the Nigerian Bar Association, to go back to its core mandates, go back to its motto, which is promoting the rule of law. And, and I'm happy, Daniel, the convener of this program, you are practicing outside of the shore, or you are in a country where the rule of law is very, is held in high esteem, and everything that is done outside of the rule of law, there are sanctions reserved for it. And so um, the cumulative effects leading to this is that the Nigerian Bar Association appears to have, with respect, derailed from its core mandate before it was 
Ubi juice will be remedial. Where there is a wrong, there must be a remedy. Many members of the Nigerian Bar Association will testify that year in, year out, we pay conference fees. The conference bags and materials are not given to us. The Nigerian Bar Association is not accountable to lawyers. And even when lawyers complain, they are treated with disdain, with uh, some level of impunity. And we began to run an association that appears to be more autocratic rather than being democratic, rather than being uh, run in accordance with the rule of law and our own constitution. Now, I know that the Nigerian Bar Association, of which uh, my learned friend, my Ziafa Mosigwe, is the chairman, we run what we call, or we have a committee that we call uh, electoral election monitoring committee. Now, many of us are worried. I don't know whether you are hearing me. I don't know whether you are hearing me. We are hearing you. We can hear you. All right. Many of us are worried that if the Nigerian Bar Association cannot get its electoral process right, either from the delegate system to this e-voting system, and we now vote, spend humongous amount of money in, the, in, in, in our elections, and corruptions, bribery, inducements, are openly played and encouraged either by the, uh, the, 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 the candidates for the elections or the voters in the elections who demands for hotel accommodations, who demand for other necessary inducements in order to vote for us. These are cumulative effects that led to some of these our colleagues waking up to, to say, look, what is it? MBA has lost its utilitarian value. Mr. To lawyers. Kutaba, Mr. Kutaba, please, if you don't mind. Um, so, in your opinion, would you think that there are justifiable reasons or that you understand why a group of Nigerian lawyers formed this new Nigerian Bar Association? Do you think they are justified in doing so? Or do you think they shouldn't have done that? Um, I will answer your question from the perspectives of the Nigerian constitution. Right. Under section 40 of the Nigerian constitution, the freedom of association, freedom to belong to and form an association is a fundamental right. And so it will be a myopic short-sightedness for me to say or to sit here and condemn that those lawyers are wrong. Because in the exercise of a constitutional right, the only institution that has the power and the authority to pronounce whether the exercise of that right is right or constitution is right or wrong is the institution of the judiciary. As of now, they, whether rightly or wrongly, those who came up to say they want to form a new association called New Nigerian Bar Association are doing so in their belief in the exercise of the right created for them and vested in them by Section 40 of the Nigerian Constitution. Okay, and I have written. Yeah, thank you so far. I, I think we still have opportunity to, so that you wouldn't have to say everything you have to say at one point. And I thank believe, you. yes, I believe our listeners will eventually start to ask questions. But, but, but have, before, before you stop me, Yes, sir. Let me own up, yeah. because uh, when we when when we we speak, we must speak as lawyers who who whose uh, hallmark should be integrity and candor. I have written and I have said so on series of occasions that Nigerian Bar Association is not a creation of status, and so we were not called to the Nigerian Bar Association but we were called to the Nigerian Bar. And so um, the Nigerian Bar Association is an association of lawyers. And so if, it, if any lawyer feels too strong 
about the manner in which that, uh, the affairs of that association is being run and is not satisfied with it, he has a constitutional right to join or to form another association of his choice. That is my position. But that does not mean that uh, as it being insinuated by some group of persons that I am the promoter and the founder of this. But I hold strong view that those people who are forming or have nurtured the intention to form this association are acting with respect within the provision of Section 40 of the Constitution. That's my view for now. Thank you so far. Um... What is your take on this new development? Thank you so very much, Dan. Um, let me start by saying that, um, respectfully, uh, the learned self JS Okutek by SM um, has read into the letter of those who said they are forming a new bar association, a reason not stated therein. The gentlemen who said they are the conveners of the new Nigerian bar association were very clear that they are forming the association because of NBA's decision to disinvite Malam Nasir El Rufai, the governor of Kaduna State. If we recall, in their letter, they stated, as part of their reasons, that the Nigerian Bar Association peddling of sectional interest was responsible for them doing that. And they also stated that what has been happening recently has exposed the inability of MBA to manage and contain the heterogeneity of the members as well as their various interests. And they went on to say that MBA's criminal powers have been deployed discriminately on the basis of ethnicity and regionalism. They were very clear that they felt a region which they said was a northern part of the country was getting the short end of the stick. That the decision by MBA had an ethno-religious bias. They never complain about NBA election. I am not suggesting that the NBA election has been perfect. No, it hasn't. And I'm glad the learned Silk mentioned my disqualification because I've had a conversation with him and I said, when we want to talk about injustices in the NBA and you people want me to condemn one election and uphold the other, then, then we are not seeing the complete picture because when I was unjustly disqualified, none of these activists spoke up. Many of them admitted my disqualification was right, but many of them also gloated that it favored their candidates to win. So it was an issue of might is right. And I said, I've always maintained when we want to solve MBA problems, we must sit down and be honest enough to admit to ourselves wrongdoing, irrespective of which side of the divide we fall. And that we should not condemn or praise actions depending on whether our candidate wins or loses. Right should be right, wrong should be wrong. If our candidate benefits from a wrong, we should be bold enough to say, as people of integrity, that even though my candidate won, that there are basis for believing that he or she may not have rightly been declared winner. The gentlemen who say that they are forming the new Nigerian Bar Association did not say that it had anything to do about the election. No doubt there were rumblings concerning the election. And if I may say, since the learned Singh has dwelt on it a little bit, nobody has dwelt largely on faulting the electoral process itself. The main grass has been on the voters register. And I don't want to be drawn into it. And I do not want to be drawn into an argument whether individuals have a right to freedom of association. Because if I suggest they do not, I'll be deceiving myself and it will defeat the aims of this. The issue is what the decision of MBA to, to, to what they say in the Western world, to no platform an individual be a reason for some persons to suddenly decide to form an association. If you ask me, I'll say no. But if you also ask me, should we be dismissive? I will probably say no. No matter my disagreement with them for their reason, with their reason for seeking to form a new association, because a person whom we freely invited, we now say we no longer wish you to be our guest, was that the platform was removed. We should sit down with them because if we're able to maintain a united house, it is in our best interest. But if we suggest 
that because of this, we throw in all manner of reasons not stated by them. They will be imputed to them intention which they never had for doing that. And, and, and as an aside, I also ask myself too, is this a case of new PDP? Where people actually do not want to give an association, but to create faction, to factionalize the leadership. I would have thought that a genuine desire to form another association would entail choosing your own name, distinct from that with which an already existing association has been registered. But that is beside the point. The point is, are there grievances? The MBA leader, the MBA leadership, to my mind, has started well by emphasizing the need for unity at the back, the need for the leadership to engage all persons in order to assuage feelings that are hurt. And I think that was a welcome development. And also to address the issue raised by the senior Leonard Silk about the electoral issues. The leadership has also said, we well, did the last three elections, find, find the reasons and try to improve the electoral process. And indeed, the main committee set up in the inaugural address was a one to look into electoral reform. MBA needs a lot of healing, a lot of improvement in ensuring that the electoral process is that which passes muster, which people will have confidence in. And to this, all of us have a role to play. But to suggest that because whenever people do not like the outcome of an election, then it thereby entitles them to form another association. I'm unable to agree with that sentiment, and I'm unable to believe that that is the reason why these gentlemen have chosen to so do. But like I said, so that I do not, nobody misunderstands me, we should not also wait them as, as, aside as, as being riffraffs, and I will not use that word to describe gentlemen of the noble profession. But whatever it is, we should be able to sit down with them and then discuss with them so that, we, so that we'll come out of this stronger and much better. Let me stop so far. We thank you very much. Um, Mr. Daniel Boala, are you now able to unmute yourself and contribute to the discussion? Daniel. <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you for having me. All right. And okay. I thank uh, the distinguished speakers on this platform, the Lanet Silk, uh, J.S. Okuchefa, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, and Mazia from Obsibri, uh, Esquire. And I thank everyone that is on for this discussion. I don't think that uh, the discussion tonight is meant to change their mind. What they have made up their mind to do, they will do. But in the same way that they have right of association, we also have a right of expression. And uh, our expression is our opinion, our personal property. And we do it, especially because we are members of the same bar and in Nigeria, or we all belong to it. First of all, my view is that the, the idea behind the formation of the new MBA is not well thought out. I, I, I want to say it is infected and it is also reactionary. Reactionary in the sense that it is not an association or the decision to form the association that is purely based on a conference, consultation, meetings, and then coming to a conclusion or realization of the need for the bar association to be balkanized or to have another bar association, needless to mention it, the new Nigerian Bar Association. My fear, quite frankly, is that we are unknowingly providing platform for politicians to seize the bar. And if the Nigerian Bar Association or the Nigerian Bar is divided or becomes the pointer to the disunity of the country, then this is going to be the fastest way that Nigeria is going to be divided. And I'll give you perspective. I am from the North and I'm a lawyer. Now, if the argument that the reason why they are forming the association is because of religious connotation, because of a governance issue that does not take into account their interests, then that would feed into the narrative that people like IPOB and some other sectional groups who are saying they want to secede the country because they don't like the president, it comes from the north. Then that means that the argument also stands. But, and then more so, when you are trying to form an association without a name that is distinct from the existing one, what you are trying to say is that you, you are coming out to form an association that in your mind you believe is better than the one that has existed. And I can tell you till the cows come home, we'll keep arguing. 
anytime you go out to form an association, you will find the same problem you are running from your previous association. You encounter it there and you will go on and on and on. Now, here's my point from the beginning. And I, I, I subscribe to the view of the London Sea that it was not the disinvitation of Erufai that necessitated this name because immediately after the election, I started reading even from social media, people prophetically saying that there is going to be a formation of the new bar. Now, I did not vote for Olubide Akwata uh, Esquire. I did not, in fact, I was vocally campaigning for uh, the Lanner Silk, um, uh, the, the Lanner Silk, you know, additional single advocate of Nigeria. But after the election, I said in, there is need for us to then rally around the bar. No election is perfect. And see to it that this current president of the bar implement what he believes to be the vision of the bar because he was elected by the majority of the members of the bar. Doing so means you are respecting the right of the majority of the people that voted him rightly or wrongly. And allowing any of this infraction or allowing any of these uh, problems surrounding the bar to, you know, probably by the time you start this conversation around creation of a bar, you take him off of balance, thereby not giving him the opportunity to implement what he wants to implement. I know my opinion can be classified or categorized as wrong, but I know this argument is, and funny enough, to be honest, I'm sorry to say that, the first argument is that the senior advocates have taken over everything. They don't give opportunity to the non-senior advocate. That's why we want to vote for a non-senior advocate. And so non-senior advocate voted for him. But now it is the non-senior advocates that are also calling for agitation and formation of the bar. That is why, in my view, that there is need for uh, the unity of the bar. We cannot successfully conduct this bar without the senior advocate. It's a fact that is known by all, and this is the tradition of the bar. So I expect that the president of the bar will engage with those who are wanting to form the new association. And I can tell you that with proper consultation and conversation, they are likely going to retract from that because it is not, in my view, um, an association that is planned and programmed, but reactionary. And generally in life, anything that is born out of reaction, usually you can unwind it. Let me stop Okay, now. Um, I think in my opinion, there is two issues that now stands out to be considered. And um, um, one of them is, would your opinions have been different if the new association did not call themselves new NBA, if they call themselves Association of Nigerian Lawyers, for instance, ANN, would your opinion will have made anything? Would your opinion have been different? Then another thing I feel I felt have stood out is what was the stated aim of the founders of this new Nigerian Bar Association? I think their letter, which I'm now sharing for everyone to see, um, is fairly explicit. Let me see whether they mentioned their reason. Paragraph two, the formation of the new association has become imperative and expedient, especially flowing from the activities, disposition, and most recently, the decision of the Nigerian Bar Association NEC, which apparently failed to take into consideration our national interests and particularly do not promote the unity of our indissoluble country, Nigeria. And then they get back to right. This is the letter that I, I have. I think I understand they may have been another letter they wrote to the president, well, to the Nigerian bar itself. But this is a copy of the letter in my possession, which they wrote to the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. Having considered these two points, let's hear from the Leonard Silk. Again, would his opinion have been different if the new association called themselves Association of Nigerian Lawyers and not New NBA? And if they, are if they, if they have given their reason for forming this new association, can we hear from the Leonard Six? Sir? If you can unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Daniel. Uh, first of all, let me say that um, from every indication, all of us, including my very good friend and 
brother Miles Afamo Sigwe have considered to the right to form an association. Um, uh, let me also say that from paragraph two of the letter that you have placed on the screen, the, the, the grievances of the people who are attempting to form a parallel association, whatever name they call, are articulated therein. And it borders on the activities of the Nigerian Bar Association. And so when my learned friend, whom I respect and whom I love, and who has been my general secretary before, says that it is because of the de-invitation to Malam El Rufai, I think with respect to him, that he is pinning these issues to a narrow partisan political issues that NBA must not be seen to engage in. And for me, that is the cross of the matter. Now, I've been a member of NBA at least for the past 29 years or so. And NBA as an association seems to have dragged itself into the murky water of politics. Let me say this publicly here, that I'm not a fan of Erufai. Erufai is not my client. Erufai is not my friend. Erufai is a politician. I'm not a politician. I do not belong to any of the Nigerian political party. And so I speak my mind as a born again legal practitioner who has tremendous respect for the ethics of the profession, for the rules of the profession. And when we started derailing, was when we started going for neck meeting and engaging political jamboree, asking non-lawyers to come and address us. And we engaged in that system that produced a situation where our members who are members of political parties begin to take advantage of it. So I have no problem with names. I have no problem with whatever they chose to call themselves. But I have problem with our own professional association, which is MBA. I've had the privilege of prosecuting for the Nigerian Bar Association at the border of benches for five and a half years at no um, at at the cost to my personal person because I believe in the integrity and the sanctity and the nobility of the legal profession. Daniel, if you ask me, the, 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 what led to what has happened now is a bottled up anger by these people who are forming uh, or who are attempting to form, form this association. And the leadership of the association, with respect to them, with respect, and I mean no insult, and I do not intend to insult anyone, have not been able to affirm and take a firm stand devoid of partisan political consideration. I have no problem with Ulumide Akwata. He's not my enemy. He's my colleague. He was called to Nigerian Bar. I respect him. But the question is far much more deeper than Ulumide Akwata. Ulumide Akwata seems to be a child of circumstances that inheriting a bottled up problems in the Nigerian Bar Association. You recall, and I, that's why I took us on a journey to 1992 in Potako, where MBA had a, a, a debacle. Why is it that our elections, even before the delegate system, resorted to lawyers carrying uh, bottles, clubs, and scrub themselves in MBA meeting? Is that the nobility of the profession that you and I were called upon to exhibit and administer? Now, let me ask you a question. I'm not a fan of Erufai, but when we say that we should dis invite the Erufai for invitation, we on our own extended to him. If you decide to invite with respect, and I do not mean to call Erufai a setter, but if in the kingdom of angel, you decide to invite Satan 
to be a guest speaker, and you decided not to say Seta is a bad person, even God himself in the Garden of Eden did not condemn Adam on her. He said, Adam, where are thou? Adam gave a wrong answer. He said, I'm naked. God now said, did you eat of the fruit? Whereof I say, thou should not eat. Adam had a defense. What was the defense of Erufai? Who wrote the petition? What was the, uh, who are the people behind the petition? Please let us be serious. They wrote the petition and the people who wrote the petition, they called themselves, uh, 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 is it by initiative? Was Malamel Rufai, even if he was a setter, was he given opportunity to be had before the, the invitation? There were also complaints of other personalities. Were those people also withdrawn if MBA was to be seen as a, exhibiting um, professional neutrality? Why did, was the Algon president of the bar now writing apology letter to, to uh, Malamel Rufai? Why was it necessary for a suggestion that Muslim Lawyers Association to select a replacement of Malamel Rufai? Was Mr. it Malamel Rufai uh, or the people uh, forming? Uh, uh, sorry to interject at this point. Um, I don't think it would be so nice for this discussion to go into the this invitation of uh, Malam Erufai to NBA. Because if we go into that now, I think it will, it will our time is running. We ha we've had a discussion on that before. Sorry, we did not invite you. I, I'm uh, sorry, I wasn't there, but, but I may, I'm not... making this, uh, I'm sorry, yes. sir. I'm making this uh, a statement because my learner friend, Afam, seems to have narrowed the issue to that the formation it's a fallout of this invitation of Malam Erufai. It is not. Okay, let me also, well, we allow um, uh, Mazi to, to, to uh, give his opinion to the two issues I raised. I have also got some comments here. refresh my memory again, Dan? Sorry? Well, whether my reaction would have been different if they chose a different name? Yes, please. Uh, yes. Was the second one? I just need to be sure I got you. Right. I forgot the second one. Okay, the second one was would your opinion would also be different if they have given a different reason, if they have said, because in that letter I wrote, I think, I think it's, it's um, too general. It's not uh, specific. Unless, I, I said, unless there is another all letter right, please I, wrote to give their all reason. Right, Dan. All yes. right, I got you, Dan. Uh, let me say this, Dan. The letter you read was the second publicly available letter written by this gentleman. Right. Where they notified the Attorney General of the Federation. The working document is a press release where they stated reason. And if uh, the LNSC could draw my attention to any part of it where I have misread or misinterpreted, I'll be very grateful. In their letter, it was all about Erufai and that decision. I don't want to be dragged into the argument I said earlier as to whether people have a right to form an association. You obviously do. Even though if another exclusive association comes up, it may require some statutory amendment because if they form another association, there are some things that existing law require that they do with the NBA. But I don't want, I want to leave it at that point. Now, the point has to be made, sir, that it's not in our best interest for another association to emerge at this time and in this circumstance. And I made that point. So in my opinion, whether they have chosen a new name or not, is beside the point, because they can always change the name. I only drew attention to that to show that it would appear like more like an internal attempt at internally imploding an association by having two parallel leaderships rather than having a distinct association but that is beside the point, considering my earlier position, that there is need to engage with those who feel like grief. There are a whole lot of grievances. When I was disqualified in 2018, unjustly, because some people just didn't want me to run for, run for election in the NBA, to run for NBA president, probably because I was not a senior advocate, I was approached by persons that we should form a new association. And I also know that one of the 
persons who lost election in the NBA in the last few years was also run for a, 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 a approach to, to, to declare himself president and form an association. And that is why I said that sometimes people want to form an association for those who are smarting from the outcome of the election because their candidate wasn't successful. And I said that with every sense of responsibility. In my meeting with one of the individual, he told me that the documents were ready, but that he chose not to do it. That if he had declared himself, he would have gone to the NBA house to start laying claim to the leadership. But that's beside the point. The point is, are there grievances? No doubt there are. Should we do something about it? You bet. Has the leadership adverted his mind to the imperativeness of doing so? From the inaugural address of Mr. Lumi Daipata, I think he has. And I know that there is need for certain engagement for us to assuage people's feelings. We may not always agree with the decision. Uh, the learned state talked about fair hearing. Well, respectfully, I do not think Section 36 of the Constitution applies to an invitation. If I invite you and you have not furnished me any invitation, any consideration, I can decide to tell you I'm sorry I have had a change of mind. In fact, in Mori Zimu's time, it was much more embarrassing. He came there and was not allowed to speak. In Amechi's time in 2014, 15, lawyers kept heckling him and made it difficult for him to make a presentation because lawyers said he shut down the courts in River State. Why should NBA give him a platform? I thought I should say for us to also know that they, 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 this invitation of El Rufai is not a new development or something that has just singled him out. It has happened to some other individuals without people basing their quest to form an association on that particular fact. And to suggest that there's any other reason why these gentlemen are calling for a new association will be reading into their letter. I insist that press release, a reason not stated there. They gave a detailed press release and there was no mention about the electoral issue as their reason for wishing. They blamed neck insensitivity to a section of the country, regionalism, that self-interest had come in and all that. Should we, like, I, I retreat again that we are not to wave them off with a wave of the hand. We should engage because we are stronger as a group. But to suggest that it's not about air fire, we'll be avoiding the real reason why they say they have formed the new association. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Mr. Boala, what is your take? And, and please, after the day, Bola, we'll now start taking questions from our listeners. If you have any questions, the simplest way to do it is to indicate by your device, raise up your hand, and I will call you on to speak. Now, Mr. Daniel Bola, please, what do you have to say on these uh, two points that I have raised? Will your opinion have been different if they had? Is Mr. Bola still with us? I can't identify him. Mr. Bwala. Oh. Okay, sorry. Okay, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Right. Right. You're, you're missing me. So you <laughs> okay. were trying to deny me the right of freedom of expression, but I'm glad. Not at all, sir, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my position will still not have been different mm -hmm. if it was not a reply issue. And the reason is simple. I know for a fact that other jurisdictions like North America, you find in a country, they may have different associations. But if you look at how they started, it was not born out of a reactionary uh, decision. Secondly, agreeing with both the Lanes Lake and Mazia from Osibu Esquire, both the elections, as well as the Aerofi issue put together, created the necessity for the formation. But in actual fact, I will tell you that it was from the, from the uh, election that this agitation began. But Aerofi scenario gave the impetus to be able to take that step. I wish that the association are able to say it is a Northern Bar Association. We already have uh, Muslim Lawyers Association, we have Christian Lawyers Association, we have different types of association in the bar already. So there is, need, there is no need for another proliferation, except if you can define. Let's say, for example, this is an association, Nigerian Bar Association of, bar, uh, of uh, uh, Mediators, or Nigerian Bar Association of Arbitrators, that is understandable. But when you say it is a new Nigerian Bar Association, the question that begs for answer is, what is the distinction between the new bar association and the old bar association? 
they have not been able to furnish us with their aims and objectives for us to be able to say, oh, this is a good reason why this association will leave. So that's why it leads people like me to form the impression that it is reactionary. If it is a well thought out, it will be one. Now, I wish that it is a Northern Bar Association or Northerners that are dictating, then I will be able to ask my brother salient questions, such as one, the insurgency in the different parts of the Northern country, beginning with the North, East, North, Central, and North West, has not agitated our minds to begin to call our governors to question, to begin to challenge authorities in power, to ensure that deliverables of good governance is made to the people. What about the violation of court orders and the usurpation of rights of individuals that is paramount everywhere in the country? We have not thought it wise to raise it as an issue and begin to challenge the government of the day. What about the right of Northern lawyers to be granted with the privilege of senior advocate of Nigeria? How many Northern lawyers scale through at the end of the year? Have you, uh, you have not been able to raise it as an issue to engage the bar about. You are only engaging the bar because of one individual whom, to your feelings, represents a section or a religion. So that's why, to me, is a reaction rather than a total plan. If it's a total plan, I'm telling you, you will see me in the forefront of the conversation. But I do not see the need at the moment for us to begin to say we are now proliferating the bar or we are creating a parallel bar association like the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators. You have the London, the Nigerian version. You have the ICANN, the ANAN. If you look at all of these associations in the country, politicians were primarily behind the balkanization of those associations. And from the moment the associations got fragmented or power in, into, you know, disintegrated into parallel form, their powers begin to weaken. So to me, we should be very, very careful not to allow politicians or reaction based on the impulse of politicians to push on. Let me tell you this. When Gazama raised the issue of fraud in the electoral voting, I went to court for one of the plaintiffs that took the matter on his behalf. And in the court of law, I was for the plaintiff Gazama and the, the Lana CJ is Okutepa led Akimboro SAN on behalf of the NBA. Now, even though I was representing him in the court, it didn't stop me from attending the bar conference we met in Lagos. When I came at the hotel now, told me, I said, look at the person that is challenging the bar is there. So because that is a pursuit within the framework of the rule of law, when you go to court, you challenge. And by the way, with the greatest respect to those who are thinking of pulling out because they have found a problem, you will find more when you leave. Because then you'll be confronted, if it is agitation that is born out of people who probably felt they are juniors or they are a senior advocate, whatever it is, by the time you get there, you will discover that in your, in your nuclear zone, there are still going to be one or two issues that will agitate the mind of the people. But I believe that the good side, the positive side of this that I want to look at is that let this tear up a conversation for us to begin to bring to the table the facts confronting the bar. Like what the Lionel Six said, he mentioned quite a number of problems. Yeah, um, Senior Advocate and Esquire, uh, or Mas, Mas Yapam, or Sigwe Esquire, also raised a very valid point. Let the conversation be around what are the problems of the bar and how can we solve this problem in order to avoid the possibility of getting the bar fragmented. But for I, for one, I will never be in support of leaving the bar without first giving it. You see, they say where there is no vision, the people perish. If you tell me you want to start up a business, but you don't know the nature of the business, you don't know how, where you're going to start the business, you don't have the capital. You just said, I want to start the business because I want to leave my master. In my view, you may do well for the moment in terms of getting emotional support, but in the long run, you may not be able to succeed. We thank you very much, Mr. Buala, for your contribution and presentation. We now take the first question from Kevin Lozenda Esquire, please. You have been omitted. Please ask your question. All right. Good evening, Mr. Daniel Elomba. I, I would want to direct my question to the two gentlemen, Daniel Boala and, uh, and my respected former GS, Afa Mosigwe. Can they please tell us in practical terms what is the way forward for those who are clamoring for a new, a new bar, a new association? Because... Uh, we, are, we have all agreed that they actually do have a point. They have some grievances which are genuine. And now, even though I would not personally support 
a parallel bar at this point in our lives. But could the two gentlemen kindly tell us in practical terms what they think is the way forward for us? Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's start with uh, Mazia Afan, please. Uh, Kevin, nice hearing from you. Let me just say, uh, suggest in asking that I tell the way forward for the gentlemen who wish to form a parallel association is like asking me to be the advisor. I don't know the way forward, but I've suggested that the leadership of the bar has indicated the need to engage with people and address many of the, some of the, the grievances people may have for wishing to stay away from the bar, for suggesting the need to form another association. And to me, that's the way to go. We, we can't afford to paper over the cracks because the animosity is building up. And if it gets to a point where too many persons do not see the bar association as being representative of the ideals for which it was set up, then the state will be set for not only this new Nigeria, but maybe for some other organizations to come up or for people to, one way or the other, show this uh, they are disinterested in the association. And the point has to be made that recognizing that there are grievances, giving them priority, and genuinely addressing them is the only way the bar can, can be seen to take this matter seriously. But to think that they are not, or to feel that it will soon die out, whether it dies out or not, is not important because the fact that there is silence does not mean that everybody is fine. Like they say in my neck of the woods, that every lizard is lying down. You don't know the one, know the one that has a belly ache. So these individuals, has, for reasons whether we agree with them or not, I do not agree with them for a start, but I respect their right to hold their view. And I think the MBA should engage them, and I believe the MBA will engage them so that we'll be able to address these issues and also ensure that whatever led to it does not happen again. It has brought to be for the importance of MBA, screening persons we bring to speak at our conferences to ensure that they will be sought as not to, for us to after inviting people to now say we are disinviting them. I think it's much more embarrassing. We should be able to do our homework well and know why reasons why people are being brought. And also know in leadership, also know what issues to address and how best to address them without any person feeling that the issue has been addressed with an ethnic or religious or regional bias. Thank you very much. Mr. Bola, please. All right, so uh, to, my, to the gentleman that asked the question, uh, I would say the way forward is first. Since you, we all have agreed that there are problems and there are bottle of you know, agitation on the, on the part of people who are agitating to set up the, the parallel bar. I think the way forward one, is to begin to articulate, engage. Now, the, the ESCO that disinvited Erofai are no longer ESCO's of When they disinvited Erofai, it was only right that they ought to have disinvited uh, Governor Wicked, because for the same reason that Erufai was uh, dis disinvited, there are one or two issues that you can find as problem associated with the way Governor Wicked also was running his own state. So there was an error on that part. But now this is a new executive, for God's sake. And this is also an executive, for the first time after a long while, we have a non-senior advocate of Nigeria who believes he has reform. Like I said, I did not vote for him, I did not campaign for him. But now that he is legitimately brought to power and is a new ESCO, why don't we challenge, channel our troubles? So to the young man, I will say, my, my learned friend, is that you can, for example, the association can write point agenda, those things that they believe are their grudges, forward it to the national office and address to the president of the Nigerian bar. You would see that from that point, he will, I believe, he may, let me use the word may because I'm not him, I'm not talking with him, but he may consider to set up a committee or begin to engage of this group to know what exactly are their problems. They raise issue of national security. They raise quite a number of issues. So through conversation, I believe, will be the best way for us to deal with that uh, issue. It will never be right for us to leave the bar because we believe that by leaving the bar, we will solve the problem. When you leave the bar, you discover that you left 
a greater problem to find a smaller problem that will also grow to become a bigger, then somebody will leave you thinking you are also marginalizing them. And then that is how we'll go on and on. And as a bar, we're supposed to be the mirror of conscious in the nation. All right. Uh, we thank you. We'll still invite our landed silk. Uh, Mr. Kutepa, please to make his comment on the way forward. Yes. Uh, well, um, for me, the way forward is um, for the leadership of the new leadership of the power to be sincere, avoid engaging themselves in primordial partisan interests, avoiding to think that some of us that didn't campaign for them, as my learner friend Dan Ekwala has said, are enemies of the bar. Um, I, I think uh, with respect to my Zafamo Sigwe, if you ask me, the electoral committee set up by uh, President Olumide Akwata was hasty. He did not take into account uh, and did not consult widely the, 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 the members of the professions that are leaders of the profession. Yes, he's the president of the bar, but there are other persons who are leaders of this profession that will look on to, that, that can guide him. Like I said in one of my write-ups, a child may be wealthy in, in money, but he cannot be more knowledgeable and more wealthy in rags compared to the elders. Uh, like uh, Daniel uh, Voila rightly pointed out, those of us who are senior advocates are now um, a personal non garanta so we will uh, keep our mouth shut. But the profession that I grew up to meet is a profession that so respects for elders. So I will also advise President Olumide Apata to caution his supporters and avoid this thing that looks like attack dogs, where young members of the bar go to social media, abuse elders, take them to the cleaner, even though they don't have any for information about their characters, they say what they want to say on social media. And the, people should avoid ethnicizing this issue of, um, um, of uh, breakaway or people who want to form the, uh, 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 another association. Mark you, in 1992, there was There was a new association called Law Society. I think we're having problem with um, Mr. Okutepa's own um, device. I think it's frozen. Okay, let's uh, invite, because our time is going, let's invite Muhammad Adama to ask his question now. And then if the language still gets back, he can continue from where he stopped. Mr. Adama, please. Muhammad. Hello, yes. good evening. Leonard and uh, GS Emeritus, my brother, Daniel oh. Boala, okay. uh, distinguished members here present. Um, what I have to say, I think uh, the GS, uh, touched on it and then the Leonard Sick just did. You see, it is very, very wrong for us to condemn people, uh, members who rightly pay their fees, who went to law school, start for their, exam, uh, their exams and are called to the Nigerian bar that they have no right. When as advocates, advocates, we know that we champion other people that are not even Leonard uh, um, uh, uh, of the prop of, of the. Uh, noble profession, we champion their rights and tell them they have that right enshrined in this constitution and can enjoy it freely. I mean, it's tantamount to double jeopardy for us to come out every other time and tell people, uh, members they are not um, right, or they have no rights to secede from the NBA. I don't see where the NBA is Nigeria. Even Nigeria is clamoring for secession. You get it, when my rights are not being 
uh, actualize in the manner and uh, 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 that uh, the drafters of the, our constitution uh, see it fit. I think it's high time we tell ourselves the truth. We sit on the table, a very big one, with all concern, not just politicking. We politicize our, uh, our, our association too much and we're going to suffer it, not just now. So please let nobody think that anyone that's like um, uh, saying whatever he's saying or he or she says about the association is wrong. No, ask him why. We all have this right. I mean, nobody is a fool. And for crying out loud, the new Nigerian uh, Bar Association was not because of Erufai. It is not because of Erufai. It can never be because of Erufai. It is because of our ethos as lawyers. And as lawyers, we have not been able to actual, uh, apply that ethos to our own matters when it comes to us. That is why. That is the main. And like Leonard Sick rightly said, the president would come out right now and set up a new new committee, a serious committee about not, not political committee, not because you want to favor this person, you adopt that person. No, come out and ask, ask every segment of the Nigerian Bar Association. We we'll rightly know them. Call everyone to bring out uh, to bring out uh, their representations and make their case. For crying out loud, we are lawyers. We go out to court to advocate for other people. Why can't we? Table? And again, we have what we call and the alternative that, uh, dispute resolution. But again, we cannot settle matters within ourselves. We just call everyone's bluff. Why should we be doing that when we know that things are not working well? We become enemies for nothing. So please, it is right time. This is the time. If we're not going to trash this, I am very, very sure we're not going to get it right. So this is the right time to trash whatever any uh, grievance, any aspect or any, I mean, any member or any section of the association is having. Please, this is a serious issue. We shouldn't take it for granted. Thank you so very much for giving me this. Um, All right, we, uh, we, we, we thank you very much. Um, Lanet Silk, let me ask a question for you to add to what you are saying before and you are commenting to what, uh, sorry, um, Muhammad Adama, I think I, I address you as Mr. Sorry for that. So with what she has said now, let me ask, ask add this question and then you respond to all of them. A lot of people in Nigeria are clamoring for restructuring. In the, in the United Kingdom, where I practice, we have the legal system for England and we have our law society for England and Wales. There is a law society for Scotland. There is one for Northern Ireland. These four countries, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, make up the United Kingdom, have this almost the same legal system. And yet they have their own law societies. There is a slight difference in the legal system between England and Scotland, even though they all belong to one country. While we are discussing the formation of a new bar association, do you think that it's an opportunity for, you, for the Nigeria legal system to look again at the Nigeria legal system and find out whether the entire country at all should have the same law society or the same uh, bar association, the same judicial system, or should we use the opportunity to see whether they are cool? we, are, we have um, a disparity, something like that? What do you think? And then with the other issues, please. Thank you, uh, Daniel. Uh, like I said, I, I was uh, saying that I weep for the legal profession when the uh, network took me away. Why? Because the Nigerian Bar Association that's supposed to be our mouthpiece and speak for us and on issues of ethics and professional uh, value seems to have run out of idea. But that's a story for another day. But back to your question. I, I, I seem to see, with respect, the hypocrisy of members of the Nigerian Bar Association when it comes to the question whether we need to have a unitary system of an association 
or we need to have a federal structure of association. Now, you discover that a lot of people wake up tomorrow and they will say Nigeria as a federation is not operating a federal system. We need to restructure. But when people wake up to say, look, the way the Nigerian Bar Association is being run, we need to have regional association. We need to have association that is based on uh, regions and uh, other se segments. We are crying that no, we don't need to do so because balkanization will weaken our power. I think this is the Nigerian problem. And I think that uh, as Ada uh, Mohammed, uh, Adama Mohammed has rightly pointed out, until we look at this matter from the perspective of the reasons why we are members of the legal profession and stop defending impropriety under the auspices of uh, primordial partisan interest or what Professor Patrick Molomumba called ownership of wrong, Nigerian Bar Association will be remain in this crisis. So I will suggest, and uh, maybe if this may be my uh, last suggestion on this program, that President Olumide Akpata needs not engage and copy his predecessors who were engaging in victim politics of the Nigerian Bar Association. Because I may not vote for you. I didn't vote for him. I didn't campaign for him. I have my preferred candidates. Those who are pretending that they are neutral, they were not neutral. So, but come to the question you have asked. Nigeria is a complex society. Do we need a polarized bar associations? Will the politician not take advantage of it? Our court system today is dishing out judgment without justice because we don't have a formidable bar association that hold judicial officers accountable. Politicians look at us as anybody, any person who can be bought over. And so I am for a bar association that is formidable, that is viral, that holds on to the ethics of the profession, that holds members of the legal profession accountable, that does not engage in the murky water of politics. I remember in 2011, a governor told us to physician, heal thyself. You know why? Because we are sick. The legal profession in Nigeria is sick. The interest in the MBA at Nigerian Bar Association, people are spending fortunes to run for the office that is not remunerated. I don't know why people are spending billions and millions of Naira bribing and engaging colleagues to vote for them. We have manifestos. Why should a lawyer have manifestos outside of the constitutions of MBA and the aims and objectives of MBA. What manifestos are you talking about? The aim and objectives of MBA is promoting the rule of law. And if there is a rule of law, and the rule of law holds sway in this society, Nigeria will be the better for it. But I can tell you, Nigerian legal profession that's supposed to be light seems to have allowed darkness to overshadow it. And so for me, what has happened by the combination of the de invitation and they try to form a parallel association, either from the new Nigerian bar or bar initiative or whatever name it is called, is a call on our leaders, on Nigerian leaders, the leadership of the legal profession, our first level to, to avoid primordial partisan interest, take a decision just like the way they took after the Potako debacle to bring the bar to one negotiable table. This question of not amber abusing those who are saying it will not help us. Like I say in my write-up, if a bird want to fly and you throw a stone, that bird will fly. So for me, the leaders of the bar, and when I say the leaders of the bar, it is much more deeper than 
President Olumide Akwata, all other persons, those who have been admitted to the inner bar, those who are members of the body of benchers, those who are senior lawyers who of, of no less than 30 years professional call, must come to a negotiable table and call us to order. When I wanted to contest one office in 1998 in my branch, a senior member of the bar said, Mr. Kuteba, it is not your tongue, wait. I listened to that senior member of the bar and I didn't contest. Today, seniority is said to be in the pocket, not in the years at the bar. And young members of the bar are abusing senior members of the bar on social media. There are no consequences for it. Somebody the other time went to the social media, abused me, and said, because I'm saying what I'm saying, because I want to contest for the presidency of the bar. I am not interested. I'm not running for it. I don't have stamina to do it. Thank but you, I am a lover of the nobility of the legal profession. And until we come together and give respect to the ethics of this noble profession, the legal profession is on the, on the verge of collapsing in this country. The Motor Park Association, Okada Association, Napeba Association is much more respected in Nigeria than the legal profession. Okay, and it is you. unfortunate. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We, we, we take that to be your concluding comment to this uh, wonderful evening we've had. We thank you very much. We have very thank you very much. I, and I thank you for the privilege for me to speak. And I've spoken my mind. And everyone will not fall because the master architect is God. He created this universe. And until all of us here are sincere and honest, the legal profession in Nigeria is dead. We thank you very much. We thank you very much. We, we will soon come to the end of this, this discussion, even though I'm still seeing another hand. But uh, Mazi, now, what do you think to my question? Is it time to decentralize the Nigerian bar or should we insist on this unitary system of, of, of the Nigerian bar? Then, unfortunately, the example you gave with Scotland, Wales, and England is not opposite for Nigeria. I see. And, I mean, in, in, those, in, in the UK, People are admitted to the bar in those jurisdictions. In Nigeria, we have a single bar. Everybody is admitted to the Nigerian bar. We have states, and unlike in the United States, which is, a, I mean, it's a federal system of government, we're also a federal system of government, people are admitted to state bars. Probably that explains why we have a Nigerian bar to mirror the, the, the kind of um, bar as, uh, we have in Nigeria. But I think it will, I need to make a few comments before I answer, I haven't answered your question, I believe. Um, also, all segments of Nigeria, you have uh, Borono Lawyers Association, Anam Brown Lawyers Association, even within the same MBA. Eastern Bar Forum, Ibo Lawyers Forum, uh, this, they still exist. And nobody has stopped them from operating. But I also need to say this. Um, the Leonard Sick made a statement that uh, the president should call his attack dogs to order. That statement, to my mind, suggests that the, the MBA president is the one instigating them to attack people. And I think the fact that people may view you favorably or support you does not mean that you control or you're responsible for all that they say. And also, we also say we do not want godfathers at the bar. And Mr. Uh, Delenesic would appear to endorse that when he suggests that your, your aspiration at the bar should be dependent on where people should tell you when to run and not to run. If... If that advice were to have been case, I would never have been, have been chairman of MBA Abuja branch in 2010. Sometimes, too, for democracy to thrive, people should be allowed to make their choices and exercise their rights within the legitimate, with the, exercise their legitimate rights within the democratic confines of an association. Yes, the MBA may have issues. MBA may not have made certain years and aspirations of its member and the general public. But I do not agree that members of Motopark Association, NAPEP, Keke NAPEP Operators Association are more respected than the bank. The bank can do better. Chief Okutekwa was a prosecutor in MBA, chief prosecutor for that matter. I served alongside him as a prosecutor in the, before the LPDC. And the work done by that, um, in that body, also helped to instill confidence in the minds of the people. The fact that things may not have gone very well or gone the way we always want it to be does not mean that we have thereby dropped less than into, into the gutter. We need to join hands to make the MPA work. 
And the NBA will not look better when very respected senior members of the bar keep talking down on the bar, keep having nothing but negative things to say about the bar. We can do better, no doubt. But we are not as bad as we are, the bar has been portrayed. Thank you. Uh, we thank you very much. Um, Mr. Bola, please. Should the Nigerian bar be decentralized? No, the Nigerian bar, in my view, should not be decentralized because for the reasons that uh, Mazia Pharmacy Esquire also has given with respect to other jurisdictions, that is a decision. And that is why the Nigerian bar cannot be decentralized because if you do so, uh, you have to look at corporate interests of the first people. So if, for example, you say it is the Northern Bar Association of the, the Nigerian lawyers, what, is, what would be the objective? You see, even the idea of the parallel bar will be counterproductive because take, for example, a member of the new Nigerian Bar Association commits a misconduct that is worthy of discipline. Which of the bar association will prosecute him? If he appears before a court and misbehave and they make reference for his discipline, which one? If you, the member of the original bar association wants to bring him to book, he will say, I'm not your member. And then people can begin to switch from bar to bar in order to excuse themselves or to avoid a situation of being uh, regulated or, 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 or monitored. But again, the valid point that the learner state has made is that the leading up to this election, those who feel that non-senior advocates should be voted for, especially the younger ones who have mastery of social media, did not use it in the manner that legal practitioners are expected to conduct themselves. They were very abusive. I have seen a couple of um, things they say. And I will make in my final note advice to the president the current president of the bar, you will find as you begin your administration, there are certain people that have come to you or they have supported your cause because they are fighting the senior advocate. They have not, they have not supported you because they like you. They supported you because they wanted to fight the senior advocate. And as soon as you say to they will come with their demands. And if you fail to meet it, they will then become your albatross. They have a history and patient in the bar. I'll give an example. Uh, Mazi Apa Mostigwe, I knew when he ran for MBA uh, chairmanship in Abuja, we were doggedly fighting for him. We fought for his That's MBA true. chairmanship. I know of somebody who fought for his MBA chairmanship. As soon as Mazi became MBA chairman, he went to Mazi uh, MBA chairman and began to give him numbers of people Mazi must appoint. And Mazi said, this is not how they buy his real road, though. And he became a problem to Mazi for as long as a year or, or even throughout the Senate. So you find some people who have supported you because they want to fight the other. And like I told a senior advocate, I said, uh, Olubide Apa, Apata, senior um, Esquire, did not really, really win because he pulled the highest vote or because everybody liked him without taking the credit that he deserved. But there were some people who felt because at the beginning of the election, there was a letter issued by a senior advocate trying to create a line, a dichotomy between senior advocate and non-senior advocate. They took it like a project. My enemy's enemy is my enemy. And they all went to war to acquire victory to prove a point against the senior advocate. But there is no way this law <laughs> the senior advocate. The government would not listen to you without the presence of the senior advocate. The government would not take decisions without hearing the pulse of the senior advocate. The bar will not have a direction without the leadership of the senior advocate. It is the desire of every lawyer who is practicing, not the ones that are not practicing, to finally become a senior advocate of Nigeria. If, if by any reason I am not a senior advocate of Nigeria today, I should not hold it against those who have distinguished themselves and by privilege have had it. I should take it to the chin and in good faith believing that someday I will get it. And if I don't get it, I believe that my practice will still distinguish me. But that is not to say that to be a professor in the university is bad simply because you have been a reader and you have not been able to get professorial uh, position. So this is what I would say in a notion. But let us be unifying as body of lawyers. There are a lot of issues that I thought, maybe one day, Daniel, you will create this platform where we will talk. Issues that the bar must look into. Address. The welfare of lawyers, minimum wage for lawyers. All of these things are German issues that confronted the bar. I hope that in the future we'll get to talk about it. We thank you very much. Um... Our guests tonight. It's been a wonderful evening. Let's take this, if you don't mind, please. Our time is up, but let's take this final question or comment from Desmond Oba, please. Let's see what contribution uh, Desmond will have to make to our our evening. Desmond, uh, 
Thank, thank you very much for putting this together. I, I, when I raised my hand, I was going to make a few points and, and Boala and Mazio Seagram have made those points. But just to reiterate, um, um, Leonard Senior Advocate um, Okutoba has made some good points about the need for us to, to unify. And I, I, know, I know for a fact that the president of the bar, Olimidia Pata, has been reaching out to as many people as possible, including very senior members of the bar, to, see, to, make, to make efforts towards unifying the bar. And I, 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 what one would encourage is that um, for senior members of the bar like Ms. Okutepa and, and very respected, other, other respected members of the bar who may not have supported Olimidia Pata's bid to become president, I think in the interest of the bar, it makes sense for everyone to come together, police efforts as much as possible, uh, stand behind, stand behind Mr. Pata to see uh, what efforts can be made towards uh, achieving the objectives that we have. Promoting the interest of the bar is, is should, should be paramount in everybody's mind. Uh, promoting the welfare of, of members of the association should be key for all of us. If we continue to push this agenda of having a decentralized bar, I think, I think like Mr. Bawala said, we will ultimately not achieve that objective. What makes sense is for us to speak as one bar make efforts to continue to push that agenda through a single bar that, would, that, that, is, that is united and that speaks for all of the lawyers in Nigeria. And that's my contribution. We thank you very much, Mr. Desmond, for this wonderful uh, contribution. I, I don't know whether any of our guests tonight have any response to make to this point, or should we call it a day? Any of our guests who, who wish to make a very, very brief response to what Desmond has said, you are free to do so. You are all unmuted. There's nothing to add. I think he nailed it. Well, um, um, uh, Daniel, let me congratulate you for putting this together. Um, what um, the last speaker has said is a good one, uh, but um, some of us don't want to put ourselves forward because uh, it may look like uh, you, are sick, you are soliciting for 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 patronage. So all that I can do is what I have done here. If anyone seeks my opinion, I'm not uh, interested in the Nigerian Bar Association being divided. But if um, goat hardly bites, but when you push a goat to the wall, it will bite. And I wish that the leadership of the profession and the Nigerian Bar Association will not push the goats to the world so that they will not bite and divide the bar. I congratulate you, Daniel, yeah. for putting this program together. Yeah, we God thank bless you. you. Well, thank I you. pay respect to all of my colleagues who are here. All that I can sum up here is that we all have love for the legal profession. I pray that one day the legal profession that is a giant sleeping wake up that justice will then be served in Nigerian society in accordance with law, not on technicality. Because when we have judgments in courts, most of these judgments with respect are not judgments that produce justice. Well, Nigerians you. are well, interested well, in justice. So well, I thank you. Yeah. I congratulate you. Thank God you. bless you. When I have the privilege to come to the UK again, I'll look for you. Then you take me out. God bless you. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we thank you very much, uh, Mr. Boala. I'm sure you, you, you are, your response will be in the same. Uh, all, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, some people raised up their hands very late in the day. I don't think uh, our time for this program tonight um, is, is okay. Tomorrow, we are having another program like this, still on the same topic. We are bringing the conveners of the new Nigerian Bar Association to be here. We want to hear from because I think there has been a discrepancy as to the real reason why they formed this movement. So we are bringing them here tomorrow again by 7 p.m. to tell us to our face why did you form this new Nigerian bar. So thank you very much, Mr. Jibril Samuel Akupetasan. It's been a wonderful evening. We are happy to have you here. Mazia from Osiwe, you've been with us before. And thank you very much for appearing on our screen again tonight. Uh, thank you so Daniel much, Bola, Dan. Thank you. Daniel Bola has also been with us before. I think this is the third time. So we thank you. We thank you very much for being with us again tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all we have for today. Thank you all for be, having patience and listening from beginning to end. Thank you. Have a good evening.